It's the 2K Sports Pregame Show. Hello, basketball fans. I'm Ernie Johnson, welcoming you to 2K Sports. I'm here with Kenny the Jet Smith and Shaquille O'Neal. And our coverage tonight will be coming to you from Washington. Welcome back, everyone. Mean Poo here with another video on the Acer Nitro 5. Today, I will be trying NBA 2K18, which is a basketball simulation video game developed by Visual Concepts and published by 2K Sports. It was released in September 2017 for Microsoft Windows, the Switch, PlayStation 4, the PlayStation 3, iOS, Android, Xbox One, and the Xbox 360, pretty much anything with a screen. You will mainly play the game with real life or your customized players and teams. You will mainly play the game with the real life counterparts or your customized players and teams. The games follow the rules and objectives of the NBA games. Several game modes are present and many settings can be customized. In terms of commentary, Kobe Bryant and Kevin Garnett appear as guest commentators. Along with the current season's teams and players, previous games in the series have featured NBA teams from the past eras, such as the 1995-96 Chicago Bulls and the 1985-86 Boston Celtics. NBA 2K18 tops that and adds 17 more such teams including the 2007-2008 Denver Nuggets and the 1998-99 New York Knicks, as well as all-time teams. Teams for each franchise consisting of the greatest players in their respective franchise's history. The game features several modes of play. My Career is a career mode in which you create your own customizable basketball player and then you take that player through their own basketball career. The mode features a storyline which plays out as your character competes in games as well as off-court activities. My team mode is based around the idea of building the ultimate basketball team and maintaining a virtual trading card collection. You assemble and play with the team in basketball tournament style competitions against the players and teams in several different formats. Assets for the team are acquired through various means, including randomized card packs and the auction house. There is a pregame show and a halftime report. Most of these have hosts such as Ernie Johnson, Shaquille O'Neal, and Kenny the Jet Smith. The end game main commentators are Kevin Harlan and Greg Anthony, with additional voices of Doris Burke, Clark Kellogg, Steve Smith, Chris Weber, and Brent Barry. Pulling up the rear is the sideline reporter, who is David Aldridge. This is a great basketball game and probably the best you're going to get for a long time. Playing this on the Acer Nitro on Ultra looked promising. The frames would dip up and down from 49 to 60 FPS and in some instances, such as free throws, it would jump down to 35. I cannot figure that out. There's nothing going on whatsoever, except that the players are just standing around. There was no cause for such a dive. Moving on to high preset proved to be the better setting. It maintained the 60 FPS pretty much the whole time until the damn team started calling timeouts. When that happened, it dropped to 33 FPS. That's worse than before. Let's not forget about those damn free throws. They were in the mix as well. For the most part, it maintained, but when the camera shifted to the floor level half court, it dipped. So disappointing. Those aren't game breaking distractions, but become annoying at times. Temps for the GPU while in game never went over 65 degrees Celsius, while the i5 CPU hit 85 and never going over, got down to 72C. With all the frame diving, you would think the CPU and GPU were being murdered. Well, that's all I have for now. If you have a game you would like me to try, leave it in the comments section, and if this video helped you in some kind of way, share it so others can benefit as well. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next game. Mean Poo, out. Oh, and one last thing. Here are the negatives. Enjoy. Can you stay with a guard if you've got to switch a pick and roll between a big and a small? Now a chance, courtesy of Gatorade, all fueled up and ready to go. The starting five on the floor. And so in the game for the Timberwolves, 
Wiggins at small forward with Gibson at the four. Teague runs the point with Butler at his side. They're the backcourt. And it's Towns in at the five, roaming the paint. This is exactly what you hope for from your point guard. Jeff Teague unselfishly pulling all the right strings. Here's Wiggins. And he overshot that one, missing. Here's Washington now. Four-point game. Beal dishes the wall. From 12 feet out, they get it again. The Timberwolves have gone two or three here to start out the game. Feeds to tee. Gibson the screen. Passes it to Wiggins. Over Porter. And Wiggins with the basket on the assist by T. Boy, not a bad beginning. Three for four from the floor. Pretty good start. A slow start for Washington in this one. Outside wall. Gortat with a screen on Butler. Here's Beal. Here's Gortat. And it's Gortat finishing it off. Now, Gortat is a space eater. And you've got to put a body on or he's going to burn you with putbacks like he did there. Towns the screen outside Butler. No good on the three. Wizards have gone just one of four to get this game started. And Wall kicks to Beal. There's the pass to Gortat. Out to the right wing. Here's Wall. Wall missing again. Boy, they wanted to hit the ground running today, but it hasn't happened. Just one for five from the field. Wiggins passes to Towns. 17-foot shot on the way. The kick out to Teague. Towns the screen. Teague dishes to Towns. Second shot opportunity. The shot misses. Words out with the defensive effort. Wizards trail by four. Well, Towns does so many things on the floor. Already an elite post score. But, Greg, one area that he has struggled with at times is his defense against other bigs. And I think he'll continue to improve in that area. What happens with young guys, though, is oftentimes you're improved how good I am most when you're young and you lose sight of some of the things that help you win games. And, and I think that's one reason why he had one of the worst defensive RPMs in the entire league. But young bigs tend to take a bit longer to develop into great defenders, and I expect he will follow in that line. Now here's Wall. After the miss from Carl Anthony Towns, here's Beal. And Jen shot, and a foul called on the shot. Got him on the way up that time, so he'll shoot two right here. Yeah, this guy will mix it up on the interior. Gortat will get some freebies. And throughout his career, Doris, March and Gortat, a player who you can always consider a double-double threat. Right, he's a pro's pro. Marcin Gortat knows every night, you're going to get great effort from me. I'm going to battle on the glass. I'm going to do all the dirty work inside. Two shots. And that one misses. I love the complimentary aspect of this group now. You know, you've got the young talent, but you've brought in some veteran leadership here for the Timberwolves. The duo of Wiggins and Carl Anthony Towns kind of gave the confidence to them to go out and acquire a superstar in his prime like Jimmy Butler. Here's what Washington's going with right now. Miami's checked in for Markeith Morris. Oubre comes in for Porter. Jody Meeks, he's checked in for Beal. And Tim Frazier subbed in for John Wall. Now here's Jones. There's the pick. The feed to Jang. Five on the clock. The Timberwolves need to get a shot off here. Crawford. And once again off the mark by Minnesota. And Greg, the core of this Timberwolves team is Wiggins and Towns. And, you know, rarely do you get to see two number one overall picks team up early in their careers. And how about back-to-back -back years? No less. Uh, but I, I consider Jimmy Butler kind of a foundational piece as well. He's in the conversation for the best shooting guard in our league. Jones from outside. Here's Aldrich. And a good offensive board. And he gets the bucket. Aldrich has got his first two points. 
a highly efficient finish there by Cole Aldridge. To the right side. Dishes it to Gortat. Mahimi down low. Working on Aldridge. A shot by Mahimi. No good. Minnesota's gone. 0 of 2 from deep here. The shot by Butler. Nobody around. No good. Shot missing. Now the Wizards take it the other way. And Meeks kicks to Ubra. Frazier outside. There's a screen by Gorton. Frazier the pass to Gorton. Bucket is good. Gortat's got his second best. The shrugging off the defense. Nice work inside by Gortat. Crawford outside. He dishes it to Butler. Shoots over Oubre. Here's Crawford. And sticking right with it. Gets the foul with the bucket. And he'll go to the line. I'll tell you, this guy does some tough work on the glass. Battles as hard as anybody for those second chance opportunities. And he'll be shooting his first free throw of the game here. And when you shoot 86 from the line like he did last season, you usually cash in on those opportunities. Jason Smith, he's checked in for the Wizards. And that one falls for Jamal Crawford. Here is Frazier. He's been patient so far. Nothing yet on the scoreboard. They set the pick. Smith on the wing. Here's Oubre. There's three pointers off the mark. So at the end of one quarter of play, still a close game. Timberwolves ahead. They lead by two. And back with the start of the second quarter in just a moment. She definitely put the ball in my hands. She's the one who taught me my form. I followed through. And, and still to this day, she yells at me if I miss a shot. So she's kind of a perfectionist. And she definitely taught me how to shoot. She can shoot it. And she still to this day thinks she can shoot better than me. I did. <laughs> Maybe some other NBA players should be practicing with Bradley Beal's mom because she uh, has definitely honed something special into him. To be sure. I'm just not sure some of the more delicate NBA egos could handle her trash talking once she beats them in a game of horse. Neither team able to build much of a lead up to this point as we start the second quarter. And before we move on, what do you guys think about what we've seen so far from the Timberwolves? I tell you what, that first quarter, you can see the game plan is a commitment to offensive rebounding. Well, you love the determination. It seems like every rebound is theirs for the taking. They are overwhelming the opposition. On the court for Minnesota, Jones is out there with Crawford. Then there's Jimmy Butler. Then there's Cole Aldrich. And it's Jang in at the four-man position. Now here's Jones. Still getting warmed up offensively. No buckets yet in the game for him. Yeah, still moving a little bit when he set that screen. He'll argue that he was set, but I, I really didn't think so. No, I didn't either. I thought his feet were moving. It was close, but he was still sliding in just a bit. Minnesota making a switch here. Wiggins has checked in. The Wizards have gone one of three to start off the second quarter. And last season, I think we saw just what could be a preview of what the Washington Wizards can be moving forward, right? They return to the second round of the playoffs. They have a clear core and strength to build around for the future. Timberwolves on offense. Steps back and fires. And he gets that one to go off the front iron. Crawford's got five now. I tell you, he has some impressive moves in his repertoire. That's as good as it gets, but just one of many. Timeout, timeout. So timeout called here, the first for Washington. Once in a while, we talk about the makeup of a good teammate. But Doris, what are some ominous signs that a player might be in it? 
for more himself as opposed to team. Well, I think any time you see someone who's not committed to practicing at the important times, somebody whose availability might be in question, who, who might let a slight, I don't want to say injury, but a nick or a bump or a bruise, uh, you know, limit their availability, that's that's obviously a difficult thing. Sure. And, you know, the other part is, Kevin, the players that I think have the most success are those that can be as joyous about their teammates' success as they are about their own. That's something that strikes me about the Golden State Warriors. It's a group invested in the group's success, and you see that both monetarily in terms of what some players are willing to give up, and you also see that basketball, someone like a Clay Thompson who has to be effective in fewer shots with the addition of Kevin Durant. Mm -hmm. Good breakdown. And his guys are getting frustrated. Coach just really kind of needs to calm them down. I think, Greg, they've got to continue to believe that the next shot is going to go in. He can hopefully communicate that effectively to them. And a new group getting ready for the Wizards. Morris is checked in for Mahini. Porter comes in for Oubre. Bradley Beals checked in for Meeks. And John Walls subbed in for Frazier. And then for Minnesota. Towns is checked in for Aldrich. Gibson comes in for Jang, and it's Teague in for Tyus Jones. Here's Beal. The kick out to Wall. And another miss by Washington. Minnesota in the lead. Teague drives in. And fouled on the shot, so the bucket counts, and a chance for one more here. Well, that takes concentration from Jeff T, Kevin, right? He's got to convert through contact. Remarkable strength. Pretty good style, too. Not bad. For Minnesota, they have shot just one free throw earlier. One for one in the game. And they had a lot of success a season ago as a team, hitting about 80% of their free throws. Jeff Teague's jump shot is solid, maybe not elite, uh, but one area where he is elite, guys, for a point guard is getting to the free throw line. Over the last four years, consider this, almost five trips to the foul line a game. Now here's Wall looking for his first basket still in this one. And oh boy, a lot of contact there, but he gets the call and will shoot two. It's on Jeff Teague. <laughs> Antigua and All-Star in 2015. He is blazingly quick. He really is, Kev. He's got that great first step. And as aggressively oh, as this guy a plays, he a keeps break. a very mellow Two disposition. Shots. You rarely see this guy act ruffled. First one falls for him. Well, this is the number one pick back in 2010. John Wall, he's the franchise. No question about that. And so John Wall nails both of them. Well, Greg, for two straight seasons before this, the Wizards have had a starting five that all average double figures on the year. The engine of this offense, I think, is the backcourt, but they can all hurt you, don't you think? Uh, no doubt about it, Kevin. Uh, having a balanced offense like they do makes it tough for teams to prepare defensively. You can't just double or key in on Wall or Beal because they do a great job of facilitating. Uh, I think the bigger question moving forward is just going to be what will the impact of that bench be and ultimately that's going to determine whether they can contend. Timberwolves leading by three. Wiggins kicks to Teague. That balls. High speed that time from Wiggins. Teague's got five. Well, I'll tell you what, impeccable work from Jeff Teague inside, showing great patience down in the lane. Morris with a screen on Teague. Here's Wall. The rejection by town. All right, let's catch up with our sideline reporter, David Aldridge. Well, guys, analytics has taken over the NBA, but Minnesota coach and president of basketball operations, Tom Thibodeau, says it doesn't tell you everything. He said analytics can measure a lot of things, but it's very difficult to measure drive. The magic is in the work. Kevin? And Tom Thibodeau makes a good point, D.A. Analytics is certainly helpful, but it doesn't capture everything. Here is Wall. After the made shot from Carl Anthony Towns. 
Teague against Wall. Teague dishes to Crawford. On the wing, Wiggins. Towns sets the pick for Wiggins. Rebound by Smith. Yeah, with the defense laying off him, you know he's going to pull the trigger. They're lucky he didn't burn him. And Beal kicks the wall. Over Teague. Wall missing again. Well, you, you see the struggles he's having getting anything to go. Yeah, I mean, he's obviously cold right now, but he's trying to find that rhythm. You've got to keep working. And Beal kicks the Porter. Gets an open look and hits. Porter's got his first points of the game. Listen, Beal could have taken that shot, but the court vision's so good that he sees a chance to get his guy a better look. Smith against Towns. Inside. The putback. He hangs in there and cashes in on the second chance points. Gibson's got the lead up to seven now for the Timberwolves. You know we talk about it all the time, guys. Those second chance buckets. Always the result of that extra effort. Porter with it. Now guarded by Gibson. Smith with a screen on Crawford. Off the pick. Rebounded by the Timberwolves. And that's the battle. They haven't been winning today. Their work on the glass has been porous, and that's got to change. Gortat's checked in for Washington. Tim Frazier comes in for John Wall. The Timberwolves also changing it up. Gorky Dang's checked in for Gibson. Jimmy Butler comes in for Andrew Wiggins. And Tyus Jones subbed in for Jamal Crawford. Now here's Teague. Towns the screen. Jones kicks to Towns. Doesn't go for him. Nice D from Frazier. They're fortunate to be in front given how shaky he's been from the floor tonight. There's a screen by Gortat. Gortat with a screen for Beal. On the wing, Morris. Over Jang. Count that one. And the Timberwolf lead has been cut down to five on the bucket for Morris. Great shooting touch in face-up game opportunities for a power forward. Morris deadly from mid-range. Here's Towns. Another miss by Towns. Beal. That shot misses. And we're through the first half of basketball here and what's been a good one. Timberwolves lead by five. And a chance now to send it over to David Aldridge standing by courtside. David. Kevin, thank you. Andrew, the energy and effort were apparent throughout that first half. How were you able to do it? Uh, we had a good practice, you know, working hard, really putting things together. But keep doing it, we can come up with a W. Hey, thanks for your time. We appreciate it. Back to you, Kevin. Thank you, David. And we'll be back after halftime as the third quarter gets underway. The 2K Sports Halftime Show. The first half in the books. This is Ernie. At the end of the period, they held a two-point lead for the Timberwolves. And uh, Kenny, what did you see out there from the Timberwolves? Well, I like that they're aggressively going to the rack. That establishes an attitude, a certain toughness. They just need to stay committed to their game plan. Shaq, what was your takeaway on Washington? Well, to say their shots are not falling is an understatement. It's a miracle they're still in this game. They need to flip the switch big time in the second half, and that starts with more movement on offense. If you don't have a great look, find the open man, drive the ball, create an opportunity. Come on. Hey, everybody. Ernie Johnson welcoming you to the NBA on 2K Sports. I'm joined by the Diesel, Shaquille O'Neal, and the Jet, Kenny Smith. And Oklahoma City is where we'll be going just moments from now as the Thunder will be going up against the San Antonio Spurs. Checking out the Spurs. They want to come out of the gate strong tonight. We've heard them talk about establishing the upper hand right away, not sitting back and playing it safe in the early stages. And guys, you think about it. On the road looking for a win against a Western Conference rival. The San Antonio Spurs are ready for this thing to get started. It's getting noisy here in Oklahoma City. We're at the peak, the Chesapeake Energy Arena, home of the Thunder. We're all set to bring you NBA action. 
Along with Greg Anthony, Brett Berry, and our sideline reporter, David Aldridge, this is Kevin Harlan. We are nearly ready for the tip-off, but first, let's hear from our very own David Aldridge. DA, it's all yours. Well, guys, the NBA Players Union recently voted unanimously to fund health care insurance for retired players. Now, Chris Paul, the Players Association's president, said, we're in this position because of the hard work of the men who came before us. It's important that we take care of our extended NBA family and ensure the well-being of our predecessors. Kevin? Thanks, DA. A true sign of how caring the NBA is, always looking out for the retired players. We have two teams that love to score out of the post, but they need enough space, Brent, to do it. What's the strategy here? Sometimes it's not just about the space, Kevin, but it's about the timing of the cuts. When a guy has a post-up opportunity, if the defense is looking at that post-up player, if you move at the right time, you can really create some incredible space for that guy, not only to score, but to sometimes right, find cutters who ready sneak behind the eyes of the defense. And so off the tip, it's Oklahoma City and the starting group for the Spurs. Skill tandem of Leonard and Aldridge at the three and the four. Parker and Green are the guard set. And it's Gasol and at the center. Now here's Westbrook. From deep, George. That's good. And so Westbrook comes up with the assist. Well, people talk so much about shoot first guy with Westbrook. How about that time finding the open man? Parker kicks to Leonard. Pins the shot from the wing. I tell you what, it's it's almost like stealing to watch how he plays the game from this seat. Here's Roberson. Westbrook kicks to Roberson. Off target with his three. Parker outside. Outside, green. This is a two, Leonard. Shot is good, making him a perfect two for two from the floor. High percentage look for Kawhi there. He's developed such good touch inside. That one's automatic. Here's George. That one off the back iron and out. I'd just like to see the defensive effort get better for their ball club. They can't expect guys to miss the mid-range Jays every time. Parker against Westbrook. Parker kicks to Leonard. Shot clock at six. Misses that one. His first miss of the night. Two for three. Here's Roberson. Kicks to Westbrook. No good that time. Good D by Parker. George against Leonard. Aldridge kicks to Leonard. Nice ball movement by San Antonio. Parker dishes to Aldridge. Parker outside. Aldridge with a screen on Westbrook. Aldridge, good. A super high percentage shot from Aldridge there. Layups work. For Oklahoma City, they've gone just one of four to get this game started. This OKC team is one of the best in the league when it comes to getting themselves to the free throw line. And a lot of that comes with the sheer force of Russell Westbrook, who draws a ton of fouls. But there's a few other crafty players who can get to work on the inside and find their way to the free throw line. And Leonard gets it to go. Well, if my counting is right, they've made four of their first five. That's good. The pass to Westbrook. Makes it off the glass. Westbrook's got his first points of the game. The Thunder, a strong team at getting points off free throws, Brent. It helps having Cantor, who's also good at drawing fouls. Well, we see how much a team can have success just stealing easy points from the free throw line. So most teams that are near the top in terms of finding free throw attempts per game find their way into postseason play. The Thunder have set that trend. Westbrook's aggressiveness, Cantor on the inside, and Adams playing aggressive around the rim. Here's Westbrook. Following the score by Tony Parker. And Gasol sends it back. Got to respect the reach and length of Pau Gasol. Outstanding job of skying up for that rejection. Under trailing by five. George with no one around. And the three off target. Parker kicks to Gasol. And Leonard has it in the corner. A 
Leonard draws the double. Parker against Westbrook. Aldridge sets up the pick now for Parker. Goes back up with the clock winding down and Aldridge with the layup. Love the follow-up. It's as if Aldridge knows where the shot's coming from and gets himself in great position on the glass. They need a good offensive possession. Yeah, they've gone a long time without a bucket. Now here's Westbrook. Adam. It's good on the putback. Oh, what terrific hustle. He's got a nose for the rebound. Craig, he's ferocious when the ball goes up. And San Antonio calls the first time out of the game. Well, Steven Adams can have an impact on the game, certainly defensively, certainly with the screen setting. But how about the character of the center of this basketball team? One of the most quotable players in the league, and he'll never hold back from speaking his mind in an interview. Got to love his disposition. And with Adams being so likable and quotable, a lot of it has to do with his incredible wit. Well, I'm looking forward to the Stephen Adams talk show once his career is finished. <laughs> or maybe not. Maybe before his career is finished. But when you're the younger sibling, you usually come up with a very refined sense of humor. Right, right. Like you, Brent. Dennis Canners checked in for Adams. Jeremy Grant comes in for Patrick Patterson. Prenas is checked in for Roberson. And Chris Dunn's subbed in for Russell Westbrook. Anderson the screen. Offensive rebound. But they recover it. Laverne passes to Mills. And he makes the bucket through contact and gets the whistle too. And boy are they attacking the paint. San Antonio shooting their first free throw this game. Find the lane. Find the lane. One shot. Really a great free throw shooter. It's unfortunate Mills gets to the line infrequently, partly because of the minutes. We've got 113 left here in the opening quarter. Cantor dishes to George. And out of bounds is San Antonio gains possession. And Antonio leading by eight. And Mills kicks to Laverne. Gay with it. George picks him up. Cantor against Ginobili. Anderson the screen. Laverne passes to Ginobili. Fires for three. And Cantor pulls it down. Clock management. This is where they can get a two for one. And Kevin, every opportunity counts. And Kristen kicks to Abrinas. Now, here's Cantor. Defended by Laverne. Cantor's shot is off. That's one he knows he should have drained. Gay kicks to Mills. Dishes it to Genova. Pass to Gay. 13 feet away. No good that time. And so it's the San Antonio Spurs holding on to an eight-point lead heading into the break. The defensive work they've done against Paul George has been a big factor. He hasn't done anywhere near the kind of damage we expected. We come back right after this.
And a moment now to hear from Stephen Adams as he reflects back on a life growing up as the youngest of 18 children back in New Zealand. So, like, the youngest over there has to do everything, like, all chores, pretty much 18 years of being a rookie. That's pretty much all it is, and people just beat you up for no reason. <laughs> Hard to imagine growing up in such a huge family, but it sounds like maybe it prepared him for life in the NBA. Yeah, I'd say it might have toughened him up a little bit, that's for sure. Wow, 18? I, that is mind-boggling. The first quarter is in the books. Second about ready to get underway. And looking at what we've seen from the Spurs so far, guys, what do you think? Cleaning the glass. I mean, right from the jump. And that really helped them to set the tone. And I think you said that if you start off playing physical, Greg, there's kind of the attention of the referees and the opponent that are coming at them all night long. And now let's check out the lineups courtesy of Gatorade, all fueled up and ready to go. Here's the second quarter of play. On the floor for San Antonio, Mills and Manu at the guard. Laverne is out there with Anderson. And it's Gay in at the small forward spot. And on our sideline, our reporter, David Aldridge. Kevin, the Spurs' Greg Popovich talked about developing players. He said, our method is usually tough love. I don't think coddling works. And beating them to death mentally doesn't work either. You give them a clear picture of what's demanded, show care, understand what makes them tick. If that doesn't get through, you get rid of them. Kevin? And the military background of Popovich plays a part in this way of thinking, David. It's why the Spurs have been so successful for so many years. And the basket by Ginobili. You can't forget about Ginobili's activity defensively. He does a great job of using his hands to come up with steals. And you might have thought that with the big three retiring and getting older, the San Antonio Spurs might need to think about rebuilding. But the emergence of one Kawhi Leonard as a superstar in the league on both ends of the floor has extended this team's dominance. Uh, the defense looked lost there. Get out your compass. No excuses. You gotta guard the perimeter. And first time out of the game called for Oklahoma City. Yeah, it looks like they tried to shoot their way out of the slump, and that didn't work. They, they gotta go back and regroup. Well, no matter how hard it's been, you want to stay positive, stay focused, and you know, maybe a couple shots will get you right back in it. comes in for George. And Russell Westbrook subbed in for Krista. And San Antonio also making a switch. Maurice checked in for Mono Ginobili. Right side, Westbrook. San Antonio with the rebound. And they've got a big lead, not just on the scoreboard, but really in the rebounding numbers as well. They set the pick. And Mills kicks to Gay. Second chance effort. It's hauled in by Adams. You got to make that. The defense was far from terrible, but, man, that's an easy shot. And that one's good. Westbrook. You know, one sign was that Russell Westbrook had this part of his game back in college. He continues to be impressive in the mid-range. Now here's Gay. Anderson the screen. No problems knocking that one down. Mills has got a pair of triples in the second now for San Antonio. Greenwich coach has his strengths, and they've got weaknesses, but if you needed someone to drop a play to get you one bucket out of a timeout, who are some of the names you turn to? I think I'm going to turn to Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving, possibly James Harden, because two points can happen after a free throw, right, Kev? So yes. I could get James Harden to the line, and then one LeBron James not a bad list of guys to turn to if I need two points. Absolutely. And then what coach would you have draw up that play? If I don't say Pop, my life will cease to exist. <laughs> I will say Greg Popovich in late game situations does a marvelous job. Not only, Kevin, of getting the ball to the guy that he wants potentially to get the game winner, but to have options and to make sure that that player sees those options in case something breaks down. Spurs leading by 10. San Antonio calls timeout. Sorry. 
Yeah, I mean, it's an opportunity to kind of regroup and, and discuss ways to maximize these possessions. Yeah, and therein lies the trick, discussing ways to be aggressive but not committing turnovers. Patterson, he's checked in for Cantor, and it's Roberson in for Grant. A different look now for San Antonio. Parker kicks to Green. The dish to Aldrich. Got a piece of it. And just over three and a half minutes played here in the second quarter. Adams sets the pick for Westbrook. And bears the feet to Adams. Over Gasol. And so he draws the foul on the shot, a trip to the line to shoot two. Two shots, gentlemen. Steven Adams brings a lot to the team, Brent. Got a chance to be more involved, in fact, with the offense after Durant left. Well, he's not a wispy seven-footer, Kevin. Thick and rugged out there on the floor and willing to set a lot of screens to free up Russell Westbrook. One of the things I'd like to see them do is maybe explore him in the post a little more often as an offensive threat. I think he's capable down there. Throw good, Adams. Well, the Kiwi Adams, born in New Zealand, was the Thunder's first round pick back in 2013. Steadily coming into his own now on the offensive end. And he can't hit the second. And Greg Popovich has led the Spurs to the playoffs in all 20 of the full seasons he's coached the team. But you know what, Brent? He always gives his players the credit. Well, Pop knows that the players are the ones who deserve all of the accolades. There's no doubt that there's an appreciation for the way that Pop continues to put his team and each member of the team into situations where they collectively can compete every year. And it's not about just competing for the playoffs, Kevin. I'm talking about competing for titles. What a run that Greg Popovich has been on. Here's Abrinas, Kawhi Leonard making his last shot. Patterson kicks to Adams. The kick out to Westbrook. Knocks down the three ball. Westbrook's got 10 points in the game. And there's no doubt that the three-point shot and its selection for Russell Westbrook is something that he'd like to be more consistent with. Green dishes to Leonard. It's in and he's a very efficient five for six on the game. Well, the defense looking at him like a Rubik's Cube. They cannot figure him out. He continues to light him up from the field. More importantly, they're winning. Westbrook, another miss by Westbrook. Well, he's gotten shots up, but they're not finding the rim. The squad's suffering because of it right now. A bit out of rhythm. George is checked in for Oklahoma City. Kristen comes in for Russell Westbrook. Thunder trailing by 10. 51 seconds left in the first half. Kristen, the pass to Patterson. He kicks to George. Down to five on the shot clock. Fades back. He makes that one drop only a second and five tries. And the mid-range jumper really right in George's comfort zone. When he isn't blowing by guys and finishing at the rim, he's knocking that one down with consistency. Now here's Parker. Aldridge kicks to Parker. Aldridge, no one around him. Nice open look, but it's no good. I didn't see that miss coming. I mean, he's usually been money from that range. The drive by Green and stolen by Patterson. Here's Roberson, and that's not going to go. And so we conclude the first half. Spurs lead by eight. And a chance now to send it over to David Aldridge, standing by courtside. David. Thank you, Kevin. Why? what did Coach Popovich ask out of you tonight? 
Uh, he just wanted me to go play basketball out there, and uh, I just tried to be more aggressive tonight. So I started falling, and uh, my team just uh, kept running with me. Hey, Kawhi, great half. Thank you for your time, man. Back to you, Kevin. All right, David, thank you. We'll be back after halftime for the start of the third quarter. And now, the 2K Sports Halftime Hello Show. Hello again, everybody. Ernie Johnson here, along with Shaquille O'Neal and Kenny the Jet Smith. Time to check out the first half of action. It's San Antonio out on top at halftime. They have an eight-point lead. Shaq, what did you see from San Antonio? I don't think anyone expected to see such numbers from the bench. You know, I'm impressed. It was what they needed, the jolt they needed, Ernie. Wow, I, I never knew their bench. As a matter of fact, I don't even know any of their players coming off the bench. Man, keep going, bench guys. And over to Kenny, your thoughts on the Thunder. I'd really like to see them attack the rim a little bit more. Change the game up, man. Generate some more easy baskets. Part of the reason they're behind is because they've been outclassed inside. They haven't been able to drive the ball, dish the ball. They need to pound it in the paint more if they want to win this basketball game. And that's all we can do for now. 